When it comes to AI, China stands out. Just recently, Shanghai hosted the World Artificial Intelligence Conference, or WAKE. The undercurrent of the event was global AI governance for the benefit of all, but it had a bunch of robots and autonomous driving. Over 500 companies joined this year, including the likes of Apple, Microsoft, and Tesla, which brought its second-generation Optimus and even a Cybertruck. As always, we got our eyes on the prize, and in this video, we'll tell you all about WAKE 2024. Let's get it. What's going on, folks? You've probably seen news about big companies failing to protect their clients' data. That's why we get so many spam texts and calls, distracting us from what actually matters. Have you heard about Ticketmaster yet? Recently, they were hacked and the data of 560 million users was put up for sale on the dark web. This includes full names, addresses, emails, phone, and credit card numbers. At best, this leads to more spam. At worst, fraud. So what is Ticketmaster doing about it? Nada. They said they didn't think the hack would have a material impact on overall business. Companies like Ticketmaster happily collect our data, but do nothing to protect it. That's why our team recommends using Aura, the sponsor of today's video. Aura alerts you when your data has been breached or leaked on the dark web. It gives you fast fraud alerts if anyone tries to use your data to access your credit or bank accounts and it removes your information from data broker websites, reducing spam. Aura is a must-have for privacy. It isn't just about cutting spam, it's Privacy Protection 360. Aura offers a transaction monitor, a VPN, antivirus, a password manager, parental controls, identity theft insurance, all in one app at an affordable price. And guess what? No need to download a bunch of different apps. Aura is just one. Don't worry about Ticketmaster or other data breaches. Aura is always on, always doing the hard work of keeping you safe. We value our privacy and we value yours. Start your two week free trial by following the link on the screen, also linked below in the description. Take care of yourself and your privacy. Aura. Home Advantage does bring out a certain feel to whatever you're doing. This year, China set a record for the technologies presented. Almost 100 major language models, 50 brand new products, 18 humanoid robots, and more. Today, the PRC is trying to build an entire ecosystem of talent in the field of artificial intelligence, and one of the ways to do it is by giving out awards. Check this out. Superior AI Leader Award, Wake Yunfan Award, Fourth Best Practices of Applied Algorithms Award, Youth AI Innovation Competition, and Puyan Large Model Challenge are all held annually, all to encourage young people to pursue AI. There are dozens of AI assistants based on large language models in China today. For example, Alipay, developed by Ant Group, offers more than 8,000 services in areas such as travel, healthcare, government, and finance. Or Alibaba's AI assistant for programmers, Tongyi Lingcode, which speaks more than 100 programming languages and helps write, read, debug, and optimize code internally. It even has its own employee ID. As of today, Tongyi Lingcode has been downloaded more than 3.5 million times. The flip side, of course, is a wave of distrust towards generative AI in China. For example, during the conference, a popular science blogger, Dr. Tang Chen of the Institute of Neuroscience at the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences, expressed his wish for AI to be more modest. Quote, for example, if you ask the AI a professional question and it doesn't know the answer, it should just acknowledge it rather than generating meaningless content. End quote. With that in mind, Kling AI announced a major update to its software that creates videos from text prompts. Soon, China's Kuashu platform will premiere the first fantasy-style movie created with Kling. Kling promises to make the neural network available to everyone, and there's apparently already half a million people in line for testing. Rookie numbers, you say? Some Thomas the Doubter you are. 
In total, China today has more than 4,500 companies engaged in artificial intelligence with a market of 580 billion yuan or more than 80 billion US dollars. By comparison, the market for humanoid robots in China is expected to reach just 2.8 billion yuan or nearly 380 million US this year. By the end of the decade though, the country hopes to grow it to 75 billion yuan, taking up a third of the global market. We think that sounds like a feasible goal at the moment, since PRC has more than 25,000 robotics companies. If you're surprised at the number, don't be. To generate such rapid development, China opens up innovation centers all around, which actually act as startup accelerators. For example, Humanoid Robots Limited is one of their prodigies. At Wake, they unveiled China's first full-sized, versatile, all-electric, open-source humanoid robot. King Long is 6'1 or 185 centimeters tall and weighs 180 pounds or 80 kilos and supports multimodal mobility, perception, interaction, and handling. The robot is claimed to have 43 active degrees of freedom, a maximum joint moment force of 400 newton meters, and a processing power of 400 tops, i.e. 400 trillion operations per second. King Long can walk quite fast, avoid obstacles, and go up and down hills. The robot technically should also be able to withstand being kicked and be able to work with its arms. The company has also launched a website to create a developer community as the robot is open source and is waiting for enthusiasts willing to teach it new tasks. But the best part is that Humanoid Robots Limited has a plan to release a new robot every year. Well, hopefully they will be new and more advanced versions of King Long because so far the robot doesn't look all that convincing. As early as next year, the company plans to develop 100 scenarios for training the robot and collecting data, and by 2027, there will be more than 1,000 such scenarios. This means that there will be 1,000 robots training in the Innovation Center at the same time. Knowing how industrious the Chinese are, we're pretty sure this will actually work out. King Long obviously wasn't the only one at the exhibition. Tesla's Gen 2 Optimus graced Shanghai with its presence as well. Interestingly, the only representative of humanoid robotics from the United States stood behind the glass with majestic immobility. Still, there was a very long line of people lining up for selfies with the robot. Cybertruck was close by, also had a line, but nothing crazy. By the way, Musk himself was supposed to speak at the event this year, and although he was present at the previous two conferences in an online format, this year, that didn't come through for some reason. Nobody was really upset upset about this because, well, check this out. A parade of Chinese humanoid robots. FD Robot demonstrated its Tleebot at the exhibition, saying that it's one of its most nimble creations. The 71 degree of freedom robot is equipped with sensor technologies including 3D vision and LiDAR, which provide accurate environmental mapping and object recognition to avoid obstacles. The robot also has force feedback and voice interaction. It was difficult to evaluate this at Wake as the robot only waved its arms and legs for some reason while on a pole. Company representatives did confide that it's still very difficult to introduce robots because of high cost. For example, Tleebot, depending on the complexity of its functions, costs between 500 to a million yuan, which is 70 to 140,000 US, whereas the average market price corporates are willing to splurge hovers around 30,000 US. Fierce competition for limited resources builds solid market entry barriers, even in China. Many attendees that we've interviewed at the conference said in general, humanoid machines are still in R&D stage and are not yet profitable, although they're already being used in education, entertainment, healthcare, and factories. For example, UB Tech Robotics, a Chinese company with total sales of 760,000 robots, has only been able to sell 10 units of its humanoid robot Walker, which became commercial years ago. Now UB Tech has developed a new version of the robot with an S prefix for factories and is running pilot projects with it at least with three car makers, including Volkswagen. Let's see how that goes. 
and Lynx Dynamics did not bring its humanoid to wake, even though they have one. But the company made the right move, it launched its nimble baby P1 to run around the exhibition area. The robot easily walks on any terrain and can withstand all the hardships that happen along the way from mud to unfriendly people. The robot has high performance joint modules, high frequency real-time communication systems and simple software development interfaces. All of this makes it an ideal test subject for developing bipedal locomotion control. Galaxy Universal has unveiled its GAL G1 robot. What sets it apart from other humanoids is its arm design, with 6 feet or 190 centimeters arm span and an available operating range of up to 8 feet or 240 centimeters. To keep its balance with the span, the robot is not mounted on legs but on a platform that can fold or open up, extending its range of motion, whatever the situation. And Data Robotics brought an updated version of its XR4 service robot. The humanoid, which traditionally lights up every robot show in China, now has legs and its arms have been refined to serve not only for artistic purposes, but also for business. According to the company, the robot not only knows how to make coffee, but is also capable of carefully handling chicken eggs and can even bake bread. Most likely as a PR move, the city of Shanghai issued the first batch of licenses for demonstration applications of unmanned intelligent network cars. Translation: Licenses for drones that do not require the presence of a human inside. And we wondered, in the beginning, why was there a designated area outside of the exhibition venue for Pony and Psych AI? Because there, you can see them in action in simulated yet challenging conditions. More on drones, the five-seat Autoflight made its debut at the conference. This manned electric aircraft with vertical takeoff and landing just so happened to have set the world record for the longest electric EVTOL flight, covering 150 miles or 250 kilometers on a single charge. Equipped with 10 lifting propellers and 3 pusher propellers with a 160 kilowatt hour battery, it can carry a payload of 770 pounds or 350 kilos and reach speeds of up to 120 miles or 200 kilometers per hour. The machine is insanely quiet. It produces only 60 decibels while hovering. What do you say we make a quick beeline back to humanoids? Fudan University presented one of the strangest exhibits at the conference, a robot with a face that can express emotions. It's meant for nursing homes, and this Guanghua robot was the only one at Wake developed by the university. Kane Bao's genoid robot also made a splash at the conference as he, or is it a she, greeted visitors. Interestingly, Kane Bao is a subsidiary of Hire, and its core business is the production of robotic vacuum cleaners. Roboterra brought its humanoid robot Xbot L, which became famous for walking on the Great Wall of China. If you like this bad boy, check out our previous video found in the description below. There was also the K1 robot from Kepler Pioneer. It first appeared incidentally at the Consumer Electronics Show of 2024 in the US. Kepler focused on R&D, manufacturing, and building an ecosystem of applications of versatile humanoid robots. Recently, however, the company's goal has been to develop a robot that could be mass-produced at a price point of $20,000 to $30,000. Liju unveiled Kuavo, a robot that is powered by Chinese tech giant Huawei's Pangu large language model. The robot has an open source operating system and Quavo's main purpose is said to be research. There was also AggieBot's Expedition A2, which stands out with a leg design that resembles the structure of an ostrich. Zhuoide Robotics brought its XO2 Lite robot which so far looks quite primitive, like many of its counterparts. This is partly due to the fact that the company is not even a year old. Again, like many of the other startups at the exhibition. The event also featured performances from Deep Robotics robot dogs, which have recently learned to walk on their hind legs and even keep their balance when angry people kick them. 
Did we miss anything? Has anyone been to the conference this year? Let us know what your favorite exhibit was and what you'd like to see next time in the comments below. Otherwise, subscribe to the channel, like our videos, and check out our Instagram for more from the world of high tech.